The Black Tides, Episode 1 Their hideout hummed like a wasp nest disturbed, a dim space beneath the droning of vehicles that passed along the streets of the drifts. Wires draped from the low ceiling, snaking around the motley array of screens and scavenged tech that cluttered the space. Amidst the techscape, Glitch hunched over a terminal, her augmented eyes flickering with the same electric current that surged through her fingers. I got something here, she said, her voice slicing through the buzz. Her eyes darted to the monitor, casting a pulsating blue glow across her face. An anonymous source, she added. She tilted her head, hair a defiant shock of blue against the sterile light. Claims it's a phoenix ash signature like never before seen. Our fixer got this lead and said we have first dibs for a premium. Vi stood motionless, muscles coiled tight as she peered at the data. The air crackled with tension, mirroring the frenetic data streams that danced across Glitch's gaze. She leaned closer, eyes narrowing at the enigmatic blip on screen. Jack shifted his weight from one foot to another, his massive frame dwarfing the scrap metal chair he refused to trust with his weight. His gaze flicked between Glitch and Vi, brow furrowed under a black bandana soaked in sweat. Anonymous sources cost credits, Glitch. His voice rumbled like distant thunder, deep and questioning. Can we trust the intel? Glitch's fingers stilled mid-dance over the keys. She turned toward Jack's, an eyebrow arching above an eye that swirled with luminescent data streams. Can we afford not to? A ghost of a smile played on Vi's lips, not reaching her eyes. The Black Tides was still recently formed, only a few years old. But Vi has known Jack since she was a kid. Jax has a point. She paced forward, each step deliberate and soundless on the concrete floor. But opportunity doesn't knock twice in these aisles. Sever's voice cut through from a shadowed corner of the room, his words laced with the gravel and wisdom born of years in hiding. Opportunity can also be a siren's call leading to destruction, he said solemnly. He leaned back against the cool wall, arms folded across his chest, his exotic herbs and ritualistic tools strewn across the small table. A faintly purple tendril of smoke slithered its way from a small ember, imbuing the space with an earthy yet soothing scent. Surely it was an aromatic custom of his people. Glitch's hands hovered above the keyboard again, poised to dive back into the sea of code at Vi's command. We're taking it. I have a feeling about this one, Vi said softly her command setting the room into the practiced motions of preparation. The wind was a harbinger of the coming night, sweeping through the drifts with a restless energy that seemed to resonate with Vi's own restless spirit. She stood at the edge of the desolate coastline, eyes scanning the horizon, where the skeletal remains of ships jutted out from the warped coral of the artificial reef. The tide was a deceitful thing, pulling back to reveal secrets it would soon swallow once more. Jax joined her side, his shadow stretching long and distorted over the sand. His eyes, keen despite the chaos, followed her gaze out to sea. He adjusted his cybernetic arm with a habitual motion, its metallic sheen catching the dying light. Reckon we have two hours before high tide, Jax commented, voice barely audible over the wind's howl. Vi nodded, her hair whipping around her face like dark serpents fighting for freedom. Let's make them count. Their comms crackled to life, Sever's voice threading through with an edge of static. Tech sec chatter is minimal, but keep an eye out for patrols. I'll keep monitoring for anything unusual. Copy that, Vi replied. Her fingers traced the lines of her cybernetic legs, feeling the faint hum of energy that coursed through them, a silent promise of speed and power should they need a swift retreat. On Glitch's feed, back at their hideout, the Phoenix Ash signature flickered, a beacon in the digital darkness that called to them. It was a ghostly pulse in their world of rust and ruin, promising power or peril, or perhaps both. Jack shifted his weight, gaze still fixed on the expanse before them. What do you think it is? he asked, a note of curiosity breaking through his usual calm. Vi's lips tightened into a line. She had no answer to give, only theories that danced on the edge of possibility. Instead, she drew in a breath and let it out slowly. 
Something Titan Corp would kill to keep buried, she said finally, and something we need to find first. Together they moved forward into the twilight zone of shipwrecks and shadows, a pair of silhouettes against an ever-darkening sky as they chased down a whisper from the depths. Vi led the way, her sleek black prosthetics whispering through the silt and decay of the now-exposed ocean floor. Shallow pools of the acrid waters revealing the sins of Titan Corp. They are the reason the lands and waters here choke with the discarded tech and junk of their past. Jax trudged alongside her, his size a reassuring solidity within the cavernous remains of a once mighty sea giant. Glitch's directions had guided them into the guts of a submarine, its carcass swallowed by the reef, now an eerie mausoleum of twisted metal and shadows. Their hollow lights cut feeble paths through the murky darkness, revealing the sub's interior, warped by time and salt water. The signal pulsed stronger now, an erratic heartbeat from within the abyss. Without warning, a guttural roar bellowed through the submarine's fractured frame. The sound ricocheted off corroded walls, setting Vi's nerves on edge. The vessel shuddered violently as if in protest. Then, like a nightmare birthed from the depths, a monstrous abomination tore through what remained of the sub-steel hide. The creature was a grotesque tapestry of oceanic horror and industrial waste, eel-like body adorned with centipedal limbs and lobster claws, its skin a patchwork of carapace and sharp, unnatural metal, surely an abomination caused by the centuries of phoenix ash poisoning this reef. It lunged with terrifying speed. Jax reacted instantly, his cybernetic arm whirring to life and reconfiguring into a weaponized form, his Tesla bolt. Violet tendrils crackled to life, lashing out at the monstrosity with electrical fury. Yet as they ensnared the beast, its reaction was not one of pain but of empowerment. The charge seemed to invigorate it further. Jax, stop! Glitch's voice was sharp in their ears. You're feeding it! Realization dawned in Jax's eyes as he cut off the current. But it was too late. The creature surged with newfound strength, arcs of lightning cascading off its metallic appendages. Move! Vi shouted over her shoulder as she darted forward, every synthetic muscle in her cybernetic legs propelling her ahead with unparalleled speed. The chase was on, through cavernous holds and collapsed corridors of sunken ships that made up this underwater graveyard. The creature pursued relentlessly, its movement sending jolts of electricity through water and metal alike. Vi's heart pounded, a relentless drum echoing the chaos around her as the creature's assault intensified. With each metallic shriek of rending ship walls, she could feel the pressure building, a vice closing in on her and Jax as they backed against the cold steel of the ship. The beast's maw gaped wide, revealing rows of serrated teeth that seemed to thirst for the charge in their veins. She glanced at Jax, whose expression was set in a grim line. They were cornered, the ocean's weight pressing against them with as much force as the monstrosity before them. She couldn't let it end like this. Not here, not now. The creature struck, a blur of limbs and flashing metal. Vi twisted aside, her prosthetic legs responding with precision as she narrowly avoided a blow that would have rent her open. Jax wasn't as fortunate. One of the creature's jagged appendages pierced his side, tearing through fabric and leaving a ragged wound. He gritted his teeth, a flash of pain swiftly masked by steely determination. We need an opening, Jax roared over the creature's relentless onslaught. Vi's thoughts whirled, seeking a solution. The creature adapted to their tactics with unnatural speed, as if sensing their every move before they made them. A chilling thought struck, then vanished as she scrambled away from a blow that narrowly missed her head. She evaded a lashing limb, the impact sending shards of metal skittering across the ground, Jack stood unwavering, a bulwark against the beast, his arm now a barrier between them and their doom. A massive claw descended, only to meet Jax's arm, now shifted into a shield in a screeching clash of metal on metal. That second of resistance gave Vi her chance. A sphere of potent energy hummed in her hand, a low-proximity EMP grenade. With a practice toss, it sailed into the gaping maw of the monstrosity.
The concussive explosion, muffled by meat and sinew, was no less devastating. The creature's frantic movement ceased, its eyes, once blazing with a violet luminescence like Jax's own power, slowly dimmed before fading into lifelessness. It crumpled forward, crashing against the freighter's hull with a desolate thud. Vi and Jax stood amidst the sudden silence, panting, the sharp tang of ozone mixing with the unsettling stench of charred brine in the air. Vi took a deep breath, trying to steady her nerves. Jax slumped beside her, grimacing as he clutched his side. This was a welcome respite, but the sharp glint of worry in his eyes told her they couldn't afford to linger. "'Signal's close, Vi!' Glitch's voice buzzed through the line, a beacon of urgency. "'You're almost on top of it.' Sever's voice was next, gravelly and calm. "'Jax, press firmly and wrap that bandage tight. We can't have you bleeding out.' Jax nodded at the sound of Saver's guidance and set to work, his large fingers surprisingly nimble as he tended to the wound. Seeing that Jax was fine, Vi turned her attention back to the signal." her cybernetic senses extending into the darkness around them. Amidst the twisted metal and shadows, a shimmering glow pulsed within the UV spectrum of her enhanced sensors. There, she murmured, pointing toward the light that seemed to groan with an otherworldly energy. Glitch confirmed over comms as the Phoenix Ash signature spiked on her feed. That's it, you found it! Vi approached the relic with caution, the shard before her was like obsidian, its surface absorbing light and reflecting a strange, shifting allure. She felt an inexplicable pull towards it, almost resonating within her. Glitch, will this thing transport safely as is, or does it need containment? Vi's voice held an edge of apprehension. I'm scouring data sheets for anything similar, Glitch replied, fingers flying across keys at their hideout. But there's nothing like this on record. Vi reached out tentatively toward the shard. Its presence hummed in harmony with her own cybernetics, a call to something deep within her. Before she could touch it, Sever's voice broke through with a jolt of alarm. Vi, Jax, incoming specter signal trails converging on your position. Tech sec enforcers. You've got to grab that relic and get out. The electric hum of engines from the polished transport hover drones split the air around them as Vi whipped around. A squad of tech-sec enforcers appeared from behind the corroded skeletons of ships, with more on the way. Their armor was sleek and menacing, the embodiment of Titan Corp's ruthless power. Vi locked eyes with Jax, both of them understanding without words what had to be done. No time for hesitation, only action. Backs pressed against the ship's cold metal hull, Vi and Jax fought with the tenacity of cornered predators. The air stung with the salt from the toxic sea. The sounds of battle punctuated by the scorch of Jax's arm once again configured into the Tesla bolt. A sudden arc of electricity burst forth, the violet ribbons of lightning jolting and dropping the approaching enforcers. Vi didn't hesitate. She seized the fleeting opportunity. Her dual blades, extensions of her own fierce will, danced in her hands, a whirlwind of reflective steel and precise lethality, Yet even as she cut down one enforcer after another, more swarmed towards them, a relentless tide threatening to drag them under. Escape routes dwindled with each passing second, the ocean's rise mirroring their plight. Sever's earlier warnings about the relic's volatility played like a sinister melody in her mind, but options had run dry. Vi knew gambles were part of survival in the Haven Isles. With a resolve that felt like defiance against fate itself, she plunged her hand onto the pulsating relic they had risked everything to acquire. The moment her skin made contact, a tidal wave of blinding light erupted from the relic. It cascaded over friend and foe alike, pushing back the enforcers and sending Jacks tumbling. As the luminescence dimmed to a tolerable level, Vi opened her eyes to witness the relic effortlessly spinning above her palm, shimmering with an iridescence. A voice resonated within her mind, stoic and commanding in its calculated efficiency. Detected threat count, eight. Command, terminate. She recognized the potential misjudgment instantly. Jax was part of that count. With a sharp mental directive, she instinctively corrected the entity's assessment of friend from foe. Before she could process further, Glitch's voice cut through, tinged with awe and frantic excitement. It's code. 
It's something called the Leviathan. The swirling energy coalesced into form and substance, a monstrous shark entity emanating red light as if embodying raw power and primordial fury. Its form shifted between other forms, ever-changing. Additional eyes would ripple into shape across its body and vanish just as quickly, possibly taking in any and all information it could. Between its shifting masses, tentacles weave through with fearful grace and intention. The enforcers recoiled as if facing their deepest nightmares made manifest. The serpentine appendages lashed out from the form with devastating force, each strike methodical and precise. The powerful visage, a manifested monstrosity, grew and shifted as it chose its targets. It grabbed limbs to throw and forceful impacts to stun. The fever dream of nightmarish forms deftly protected Vi from errant, fearful shots that rang out from some of the enforcer's weapons. It was clear that though Titan Corp may have been this relic's creator, they had no concept of its potential. This Leviathan was a torrential storm of fury and precision, exacting the will of Vi herself. It was as if this being was an extension of her thoughts, yet with a mind of its own. She willed it, but almost as if it chose its actions before she could decide. Its power surged within her just as furiously, each fiber of her muscles pulsing and each spark of her cybernetics rushing with reserves. Jax, unharmed in the midst of the whirring maelstrom, caught a glimpse of Vi. Her eyes emanated the same glowing red that the synthetic monster was. The battle ended almost as quickly as it had escalated. The enforcers lay neutralized or scattered in panic. The figure transformed once more in an instant, now smaller, its form playfully shifting between shapes and colors, a mesmerizing display of teal and magenta. A childlike voice bubbled up in Vi's consciousness with playful curiosity. Hey there, I'm Levi. Seems you needed a little help. Vi stood in silent awe while Jax managed a disbelieving chuckle amidst his recovery from being tossed aside by the relic's dramatic entrance. The comms crackled to life as they regrouped. Vi held up her hand as the strange synthetic creature swam to nuzzle it. Levi, she said astonished. It wants to be called Levi. Jax leaned against the now-destroyed remains of the ship they have been trapped against and began to laugh. Looks like Vi's got herself a pet fish. The rising tide beckoned the end of the night's mission, a success for the Black Tides as they work to destabilize the generation's long control that Titan Corp has had on the people of the Haven Isles. But what was the purpose of this relic? Did Titan Corp know that it still existed? If they didn't before, then they must know now. For now, however, the Black Tides have shifted the currents of change in their small isles, and that change is sure to cause storms. This was another tale from within the unwritten tome. Like, subscribe, and comment down below. You never know what will come through next.